Well, as you guys can see, this is a DR power mower. Uh, I'm not sure what model it is, unless it says up here. Mm, just says DR field and brush mower. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this uh, has a few issues. Actually, it only has one issue. Um, the owner of this machine uh, stripped the spark plug threads in the head. And I'm not going to helicoil it because I don't believe in helicoiling. Um, it's just it uh, getting the metal shavings in there. It, I mean, it can ruin an engine very quickly. So I'm not going to helicoil it. I actually purchased a new head. He decided to go with a brand new head. Um, which is about $105 list price uh, for this engine, which is a Briggs & Stratton 825. Um, this is a 2008 model. Um, so basically, we're going to uh, go ahead and start stripping stuff off of this so that I can get to the head. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to remove the muffler and the carburetor first, plus uh, the valve cover, disconnect the rockers, um, and, the, and um, so I can get the push rods out of there and um, then I can start removing the head bolts to take the head off. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's uh, start stripping these uh, other parts off of here so we can uh, get to the heart of the job. I'm going to start by removing the um, muffler. There are two 3 8 bolts up here that hold the manifold onto the head. There is a three-eighths um, bolt right there that holds the muffler heat shield on. Um, and there's another one over here that also holds the heat shield on. Then there's a five-sixteenths um, bolt back there that holds the heat shield on. So I've got to pull off a few different things here. Okay, that right there gets the manifold off um, of the head, as well as this bracket here, the front heat, uh, heat shield mount, and it looks like all we're going to have to do is take that 5 16 and that 3 8 out right there. I don't think we'll have to take this one out. the heat shield out of the way you can get to the uh, 3 8 nut or a bolt here on the muffler a little bit easier. This doesn't actually go into the muffler, it just goes through an ear on the muffler. Okay, now that's removed. You can see the manifolds connected right there as well as the whole heat shield held on by that one 3 8 bolt right there. We are uh, going to take the carburetor off now. This is the last thing we need to do before we can uh, take the valve cover off and then start disconnecting the head. There's two 5 16 bolts in the top of this air filter cover that need to come off. They are uh, pretty tall too. Um, you have your air filter there. You can set that in the cover aside. Now what we need to do is take these two 5 16 bolts out of the here. These hold the uh, whole air box assembly onto the carburetor itself. And then behind that are two 3 8 bolts which hold the carburetor onto the head. I have one of these magnetic parts trays right here which really helps with uh, keeping things organized. Um, so you should invest in one of those. I think they're only like 10 bucks. This is a Craftsman one. Now down here we have three eighths, two three eighths bolts that hold the carburetor onto the head. These are also um, accessible with star bit, but I think I'm gonna just try to get them with a three eighths. The other thing you have to remember is the fuel line here. You're gonna wanna grab a pair of pliers here. Um, any kind will work, but these ones work better than needle nose just because of the angle. Go ahead and pull that off. Should come off without too much difficulty. If you rip the fuel line, it's okay. The fuel line is cheap and easily accessible. Some pretty nasty gas in there, I gotta say. 
You can just tuck the fuel line up in underneath that shroud between that and the flywheel. Just don't forget to hook it back up once you get your head on and put the carburetor back on. Now you're going to need an extension and a 3 8 inch socket. Go ahead and take these off of here. So now that you've got the carburetor disconnected, all you need to do is uh, pull down and turn, kind of rotate it around that, like that, to get it off the uh, um, little uh, throttle linkage there. Save your spacer. And then you can just set your carburetor aside for later. One more uh, thing that you have to do before you um, start the valve cover that's kind of related to the carburetor is this whole bracket here that goes over the carburetor that has all the throttle linkage on it is also connected to the head. So that's also just a 5 16 bolt. This one, I'm going to want to take that off of there. Put that in your parts tray. And this whole thing will come off of there. That also has a um, gasket on it. Try not to rip that when you take it off. Now you can just kind of set this down here like this. We're not going to use it for a while. Now we've got to take the valve cover off of here. To do that, to do that, there are four uh, 3 8 bolts right here. One on the top, one at the right ear there, one at the left ear, and one on the bottom. Go ahead and take those off. A little bit of oil will probably come out of this valve cover when we take it off. There's just a little bit of oil in there as you can see. Not too much. Set that valve cover aside. You're going to want to save it. The kit does not come with one. The advantage to getting this kit, which is uh, kit number 799072 um, from Briggs & Stratton. That's the part number. It comes with the head. Um, a new carburetor gasket as well as a valve cover gasket and a head gasket. So that's the all the gaskets and the head, which is why is why it's so expensive at $105. Um, but uh, that'll be all set for you if you just get that kit. Now that you have your valve cover off, you can go ahead and start taking your head off. You don't even have to uh, disconnect any of these rockers or anything. The new head assembly right here comes with uh, rocker arms and valves and everything. The only thing that has to go in there are the push rods, but those just slide out when you pull the head off. So there are four 3 8 inch bolts right there, head bolts. Two on top here. And two right here on the bottom. Those were on there nice and tight, just like head bolts should be. Now we can go ahead and pull this head off. It should just pop off. If it doesn't, give it a little bit of persuasion with a flathead screwdriver here. And that's starting to come out. There's a few studs it slides on as well. And just like that. Now your push rods are the same length, so it doesn't matter which way they go back in, which is good. Engine's been running pretty clean, as you can see. No blown head gasket issues. A little bit of carbon buildup, but that's to be expected. So uh, then we'll just set that aside for now, and we're going to start cleaning off the gasket material there. Now we have the head all off, it's all scraped and cleaned up, 
There's a little bit of roughness there as you can see, but there's always going to be some residue staying behind. I uh, just kind of cleaned up inside here, inside the cylinder wall, made sure there was no junk in there or in the uh, valve chamber here. Also just cleaned up the face of this with some WD-40 and rag. That's pretty clean now. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the new head on, start assembling it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, not really much more I can tell you. Now you're going to want to just kind of place this over here. Make sure everything's lined up. Put, make sure those studs are lined up in there as well. And then go ahead, take your extension, start putting those in. We'll put the push rods in later. Let's get all the bolts at least started in here. <coughs> You're also going to have to reset your valve clearances once you uh, get this all back together. So you can loosen these nuts <coughs> and then you're going to have to reset them. I'm going to actually have to look up what the clearances are and then I can tell you guys. As I had assumed with um, this engine, just like those flathead engines, um, as like really tight, just you don't really have to check them. Just like if you put it on the bolt and you give it some, I mean, it just get it really snug with that, like really tight, and and that'll be that'll be good for torque there. I, I think it's probably something like 20, 20 foot pounds, something like that. And uh, that was how I always did the flathead engines. I never had one blow on it, so I'm just going to do it that one that way. That's what the people said they do. They just, you know, make sure that's tight and then they're good. Um, still have to check the valve gaps here, but we can start assembling this. We can do the valve gaps later. Um, just kind of want to get the carburetor back on so that I can, uh, you know, get the fuel line out of there and rotate my flywheel so I can find top dead center and then set my, um, my uh, valve gaps. So... I put the carburetor back on. Um, just a heads up, if you guys buy this kit, you're going to want to make sure that you don't put that plastic spacer back in between the carburetor because the um, gasket that comes with it um, for the carburetor is thicker and it actually says in the instructions not to put that plastic um, spacer back between the carburetor and the head. So uh, just, you know, if you want to, if you, when you put that carburetor back together, just put it back in the reverse of how I took it off and make sure you ditch that plastic spacer that I had there when you put in this new carburetor gasket because it's a lot thicker. So to set the valve lash, um, you're going to want to find top dead center, which is the position where the engine is not moving either of the valves. Um, the decompression stroke, basically. Um, I'm going to want to make sure and just move this out of the way so I can turn this flywheel so I can see the valves move. So here's your exhaust valve moving. There's your intake valve moving. Okay. And there, right there, is your top dead center stroke where there's, where there's the most um, play. There. So uh, what you're going to want is 10 on the exhaust valve and 5 on the intake valve. Anywhere from four intake to six intake and nine exhaust to 11 exhaust. So I'll just do five to 10. Um, so I'll go ahead and set the exhaust first. I have my 10 feel gauge right here. I'm just gonna put that in there, make sure to loosen that up. And basically what we're gonna want is till there's just a little bit of grab in there. That one's good. So you're going to take these new set, these new set Allen screws right here, put them in the middle of these valve nuts, and tighten those down. Okay, well now we've got the bulk of the engine put back together. I've got a new spark plug in that hole there. I set the valves at um, five and ten, five uh, thousandths 
intake and 10,000 exhaust and you can see the engine has plenty of compression so uh, we'll uh, put the sh um, shroud back on and all the plastic pieces I'm not going to show you guys putting that back on um, just like I didn't show you putting the carburetor or the muffler back on because it's pretty straightforward and you can follow just what I showed you the first time in reverse um, and uh, these plastic shrouds I mean you guys take those off all the time so those are really straightforward um, I'll put this all back together and we'll do a first start and see if it runs okay okay well, we've got the whole thing back together we'll give it a few primes try to run got a new spark plug in there it's got a brand new oil change, it's got a brand new head, new gaskets. So in theory, when I turn this key, should start. Make sure it's in neutral. That's reverse. Okay, there we go. Neutral, here we go. 